prokaryotic RNA synthesis. RNA synthesis, also called transcription, takes place within the cytoplasm of the cell. It requires a template strand of DNA with which to create an RNA copy. There are three stages of RNA synthesis. Initiation, where the enzymes are orchestrated on the DNA template. Elongation, the adding of nucleotides to form the RNA strand. And termination, in which the RNA is completed and the enzymes detach from the DNA. The first stage is initiation. We start with a piece of DNA. The three prime to five prime strand of DNA is called the template strand, also known as the coding strand. Initiation begins at the promoter region or the consensus sequences. The promoter region of the DNA is at the beginning of the gene. Two important binding regions occur at 10 base pairs and 35 base pairs upstream of transcription. Both sequences are important as mutations can prevent initiation. Common in bacteria is the negative 10 region, also known as the Pribnow box. It is a series of thymine and adenine residues. The Pribnow box is important for the recognition of the promoter region. Other negative 10 and negative 35 consensus sequences exist but are recognized in a different manner. Another important locator on the DNA strand is the initiation site or start site, labeled plus one. This is where transcription of the DNA template strand begins. In order for the RNA polymerase to bind, transcription factors must first bind to guide the polymerase to the start site. One way for transcription factors to bind is called a helix turn helix motif. Once the transcription factor has attached to the DNA, the RNA polymerase can bind. The RNA polymerase binds to the promoter region, completely covering the two consensus sequences. The transcription factor found upstream of the RNA polymerase that makes contact with the polymerase and enhances its activity is called an activator or positive regulator. Positive regulators may even bind so far upstream of the promoter region, they have to physically bend the DNA in order to come in contact with the RNA polymerase. Other transcription factors require a second protein to bend the DNA. These proteins are called integration host factors, which bind between the activator and the promoter region and bring the activator to the RNA polymerase. Negative regulators or repressors bind to nucleotide sequences called operator regions to inhibit transcription. The RNA polymerase is a very large enzyme characterized by five subunits, two alpha subunits, a beta and beta prime subunit, and an omega subunit. One more subunit is necessary to complete the RNA polymerase hollow enzyme, a sigma factor. It is the sigma factor that determines whether a gene will be transcribed or not. In any given cell, there are numerous types of sigma factors. Under normal conditions or under stress, different sigma factors recognize different promoter regions. Now that the hollow enzyme is complete, the formation of the transcription bubble can take place. The RNA polymerase unwinds the DNA by itself. In order to start transcription, energy from an ATP or GTP is required where the ribose from the triphosphate provides a 3' hydroxyl to attack the first phosphate in the first nucleotide. This displaces the pyrophosphate. The new RNA therefore has a triphosphate at its 5' end. Once transcription has started, the sigma factor falls off. The next stage is elongation. Elongation occurs when approximately 12 nucleotides have been added to the RNA strand. Once the sigma subunit has dissociated, and the polymerase has started to move from the promoter region. When the RNA is synthesized, it is made in opposite polarity to the template DNA strand, meaning the 3' prime end of the RNA faces the same direction as the 5' prime end of the DNA. Inside the transcription bubble, nucleotides come inside the RNA polymerase to make a complementary strand to the template strand of DNA. Here, all base pairs match up like in DNA synthesis, only instead of thymine, uracil is paired with adenine for RNA synthesis. Constant unwinding can lead to supercoiling of the DNA, which is like a telephone cord that is twisted at one end. Eventually, stress in the middle of the cord will occur, causing tight loops and coils. Topoisomerases are the enzymes used to counter these supercoils. Topoisomerases change the supercoils so that the DNA strands are more readily unwound.
Termination is the last stage of transcription. There are two types of termination, recognized by the RNA polymerase by a DNA sequence called a terminator. Hasta la vista, baby! One type of termination is called factor-independent termination. It proceeds when two specific sequences are transcribed. These sequences are cytosine and guanine-rich and can vary within the cell. As both cytosine and guanine-rich sequences are transcribed by the RNA polymerase, Hydrogen bonds between the bases are made along the RNA strand, forming three hydrogen bonds making the connection very stable. These sequences form a hairpin loop. At the end of the cytosine and guanine-rich sequences, a series of adenines and corresponding uracils form. This connection is much less stable as they only form two hydrogen bonds. As a result, the RNA dissociates from the DNA. After the RNA is dissociated, the transcription bubble collapses and the RNA polymerase is released from the DNA. The other kind of termination is factor-dependent termination. It requires an additional protein factor to detach the RNA and the RNA polymerase. When E. coli is subjected to a change in temperature of 30 to 42 degrees Celsius, Different events occur to save the cell that all can be sensed in the cytoplasm of the bacteria. Sigma-32, a subunit of RNA polymerase, stimulates the transcription of genes encoding heat shock proteins, HSPs, or chaperone proteins, that are going to respond to this increase in temperature. Sigma-32 is an unstable protein during steady state growth at lower temperatures, with a half-life of only one minute. However, after a shift from 30 to 42 degrees, sigma-32 is stabilized for an extended period of time. Under normal conditions, the sigma factor is subjected to proteolysis by several proteases. Under heat stress conditions, sigma-32 binds to RNA polymerase, allowing it to transcribe the mRNA necessary to produce heat shock proteins. This is all triggered by the improper folding or aggregation of proteins at higher temperatures. These chaperone proteins participate in the refolding of improperly folded proteins, but are not part of the final protein or protein complex. Chaperones DNA K, DNA J, and GRP E act together like a team during the early folding process. Chaperones Grow el and Grow es are two other chaperone proteins that also participate to produce correct folding. These five heat shock proteins bind to the improperly folded protein and help in the reconstitution of the correct folding. If the proteins are too damaged to be refolded, however, or if the folding chaperones are saturated, heat shock proteases will destroy the damaged proteins.